Yo, what up? It's your boy, when JJ Stone, aka Black Gritty, and I am here with my guy, Chris. Chris, say hello to the people, Chris. What's up, baby? <laughs> so, uh, I affectionately call him Grumpy Bear. I mean, I know you're happy. Your life is good right now. So, you haven't been grumping that much. Football season's coming. So, I expect more Grumpy Bear to come back around <laughs> once football kicks off. But um, thanks for coming on. Good to see you. You know, obviously, we chit chat on the internet all the time. So, uh, everything's good in your world? Yeah, everything's great, man. Uh, working at ESPN's been awesome. And, you know, Miss Philly, definitely Miss Philly. I only still live up the road. So, yeah. And, uh, I, and I, I'm always checking one, in. One thing about that real quick. How, how you get out there riding around with the Fanatic and Ike out here sitting on the sidelines? I mean, <laughs> I got to talk to him about that. I need to bring that up to Ike because I'm just saying, he's been out there 17 years. I ain't see him cruising on the street with Let the me Fanatic. I mean, so I'm just putting I that out that, there. Like, I had no idea what was involved in terms of safety, as in there is none. <laughs> there is none. <laughs> you, you were hanging on for dear life sometimes, boy. You, oh, no, he was rolling. Man. I'm holding on the back of the fanatic with one hand, and I'm holding on to just basically a a piece of wood with the other, trying to hold, <laughs> just trying to stay on the thing. Uh, and you know, we're running around, we're playing, they're playing the Mets, and I'm thinking I'm going to fall off this thing and go break bread in Nimmo's knee. Yeah, I, I watched that video like seven times. I'm, I'm gonna put it up in the things so people can see it. It was just awesome to see. Like I said, I don't know, I don't know what Ike's doing wrong, but he 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 probably ain't trying to risk his life like you. You out there risking it all for the people. So. <laughs> no, that was <laughs> no, that was Ike was a smart one, but I had a yeah. blast. That, that listen, that that's uh, an experience I'll never forget. Well, now you should be having a blast because uh, New York has got like some buzz and some stuff going on, especially with the Jets. <laughs> um, I have like a, f a couple of Jets fans in Miami and L.A. And I, all I've been getting is like all this Jets love and and, and, and pouring in because you got Aaron Rodgers. It's where all um, Green Bay quarterbacks go to retire. <laughs> and so uh, what do you think about the hype on Aaron Rodgers and the Jets overall right now? Uh, in my grumpy bear role. I will say that I am uh, a little bit on the, I wouldn't say skeptical, but like, just let's, let's settle down and, and wait here. And the reason I say that is I understand that last year he was hurt toward the, you know, toward the end of the area, the thumb issue uh, for a lot of the year, but he was really playing poorly down the stretch last season. And I do wonder like, because of Tom Brady, do we all just automatically assume everybody can play till they're 45 at a high level? Yes. Um, it feels that way, and it, I think it's unrealistic. I, I I feel like Rodgers, you know, he feels great right now because he's had four or five months off, and he hasn't been doing anything, and that's totally good, and I get that. But I also uh, realize that this is going to be about when they get to week 11, week 12, and what does he look like then when he's taken some – shots and here's the other part their offensive line right now is is problematic um i think they'll be healthier uh you know i'm not worried about the interior so much uh, i love the kid tipman that they drafted at center vera tucker's gonna be good he'll be fine lakinson will be fine it's the tackles makai yeah. becton clearly does not want to play right tackle and i don't know like I get the impression if you you listen to Salah and how he talks about him, he's starting to talk about him like he talked about Denzel Mims. Like he he's just yeah. he doesn't love him. So I would be very concerned about that from a, a Jet perspective. It's not the only concern, but it's by far the biggest. So I'll touch on the line. I one hundred percent agree with you about the line. Uh, that's one of the things in you know, Eagle Country we're talking about playing the Jets and how it's going to be a tough game for the defense because they're going against Aaron Rodgers. And I'm like, I'm not focused on going against Aaron Rodgers. I'm focused on that rotating D-line going against against that offensive line. I'm yeah. focusing on Reddick and, and Smith and the young guys coming off those corners against those guys. So that's where I see it uh, coming in the fold for us. But as far as Aaron Rodgers is concerned, the only thing I'll say is, you know how it is when you're somewhere where you don't want to be after a while or you're not comfortable, any kind of job. Everybody knows what that feels like when you're just somewhere and you don't want to be there. And so you don't perform as well as you could at some point. You start wearing down and you care less. I feel like I don't know if it's for show or because there's a lot of young guys or because he knows that this defense is so great. He seems re-energized his, his mannerisms. He's not talking crazy and, and mythical. You know, he's more direct and jovial like the young Rodgers that I fell in love with. I feel mm -hmm. like he's that guy again. So that part of it, I feel like, is something different that I'm seeing from him. But the the defense is great. 
That offensive yep. line is the problem. You just got Delvin Cook too. So I mean, that's a little bit of overkill in the running back situation. But well, um, look, I also think you know, Brees Hall and his health probably played into that too. But it mm -hmm. makes sense to go and get him, especially when he gave up all the money that he did. Rogers, that is. Yeah, I, I want to know what he. I don't. Know, I I want to know how jovial we are mid season when he's gotten beaten up pretty good. You well, know, I want to know how jovial he is. Like he made some comments yesterday, like. Next week, you know, I haven't really stepped in so far and said anything. Next week, if we're still at the same spot offensive line was, I may have to step in and say some things. And hey, um, I, I, I really do hope, for the Jets' sake, that this is this is it for them. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not a Rogers guy after what I saw the last couple of years. I, I'm really not. I think he handled it. Not that the Packers handled it brilliantly, but I thought he handled it very poorly. And and I'm and I'm on board with that too. That's that's why I said like I, he's tricking me into making me love him again and feel good. But that's what Hard Knocks does. Uh, so let me hop into that. Um, I tell you what, Hard Knocks is turning. It, the Jets are not giving him access. It is a Jet infomercial. So uh, by the end of Hard Knocks, if you love the Jets, you're gonna love me even more. If you if you are indifferent about the Jets, you will hate them by the end of Hard Knocks. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's that's usually what Hard Knocks does, right? Like it just makes you. F they pick the characters that are the best part of the story, and they run with that. And it's either the emotional. He's got three kids, and he's trying to make the team, or the old guys coming back with the young guys and making jokes. So they they know how to tell a story to make you fall in love with them. And that's why I I don't know how the curse is per se, but the the biggest thing that I see from that is just the the line play and the jovialness right so yeah. just to get back in my list of things old school training camp versus new school training camp like you said rogers around here hugging everybody and they're joking they got handshakes already and everybody's popping and locking and then every once in a while a fight breaks out and everybody's like oh my god the teammates are pushing each other and oh Dak threw an interception he called him a called him a punk like what are they doing i'm like 10 years ago they were running two a days and trying to kill each other Yep. Every summer, every team, right? Like it, this isn't a random thing. They were literally fights in every single camp, every single year from the dawn of time. It's not anything new. Am no. I wrong about that? No, no. And you're right. There is a lot of pearl clutching now when <laughs> it comes to that kind of stuff. And it's, <laughs> it's silly. I, I mean, that stuff happens all the time, especially when these teams have these joint practices. Like this time right now in training camp is something we don't, necessarily have an appreciation for but this is like hell week right now man yeah. this is like you're right in the middle of it you can't really see the light at the end of the tunnel yet to get to the season and it's the same damn thing every day um but it's so much easier than it was when it was you know two a days two and three times a week yeah. um and, and they'd beat the daylights out of you so yeah i'm with you like let's let's tough it up just a little bit considering uh, what lies in front of you. And I hate being the guy that says, oh, you know, they're being soft or, you know, or anything like that. But you've also got to remember that as much as you have established guys, there are young, hungry, undrafted lions or middle-aged guys who've been cut from other teams that are trying to make a team. So they're yep. not playing games. They're, they don't have a hundred million dollar contract. So when they're out there in these preseason games that people quote unquote don't care about, somebody's trying to knock someone else's block off and put some something on tape to show that they belong in the NFL. So I I appreciate preseason. I appreciate the training camp because some guys out there are trying to make his dreams come true, and it might be on the bones of somebody else making a hundred million dollars. You know what I'm saying? Oh so, yeah. There, there's a lot of that going on, which people just overlook and glance like, oh, they're not playing anybody. Well, somebody's out there playing. And somebody's going to get signed because of the way that they're playing. Yeah, listen, I, I couldn't agree with you more with everything you just said. And I, I don't blame any kid who's trying to make a team. Mm -mm. It's exactly what they have to do. They got to they have to go out and bust it as much as is humanly possible. So if somebody gets a shot that they don't like, that's going to happen. But sorry. So one last thing about the Jets, and we're going to move on to the Giants. The Jets also have to work in a world of murderer's row. The AFC yeah. is just the Thanos gauntlet of quarterbacks. Like all yeah. the, like, it's like LeBron James is on the NFC and yeah. everybody else is on the West. Like, yeah, we, Jalen Hurst is predicted to go to eight straight Super Bowls because yeah. everybody is beating each other up over there. So Rodgers also has to contend with that. Even in his own division, he's got to 
deal with like two of the top five or whatever is going on out there. So good luck to the Jets. Uh, my personal prediction is not this year, next year, because I think they're going to have to spend some draft capital or do some, pay some money and bolster up that line for him, and then he'll be good to go. But like you might, like you said, he might also just fall off a cliff. Yeah, listen, I, I don't, I don't know if they're going to fall off a cliff. I tend to agree with you. I think the Jets will make the playoffs. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Um, what I really want to see, and and I think Joe Douglas has done a great job. Yeah. Since he's been here, but there have been a couple of key things that they have missed on Wilson for one, but certainly with the offensive line, Vera Tucker's been great. Tipman, I think, is going to be good, but like I said, um, the, these tackles, the tackles are a problem, and yeah. that, that's something that has to be addressed. They are not a championship team yet. No, but the defense is nasty, and my goodness, y'all won games with White last year, so I mean, anything is possible in the Kevin Garnett uh, phrase of saying that. Um, okay. So, the Giants, what do, you, what do you think about the Giants? How are the Giants looking? I think it's a step back year. I, mm. I A lot of people think the Giants are going to be good again, and I, I look at this like, where did they get better? Like, they brought back Daniel Jones, who was okay last year. They had the Saquon mess. Yeah. Maybe they got a little better at receiver. But here's what really I think people forget about with it. The Giants last season won nine games, and they had the easiest schedule in the league. This year, they have the second toughest schedule in the league. And I yes. don't think they're I don't think they're the, they're all that better. Um so it feels to me like it's one of those seasons where it, it's an in-between thing. You've seen this with coaches who come in in their first year and get the most out of what they have and they win 9 and 10 games, sometimes they get to the playoffs, but really they understood that they could do that, but you're going to take a step back in your building of what you're trying to do. And I think that's what you're going to see this year. They're not going to win five games. I don't think it's that. I think it's an in-between year. I think it's a six, seven, eight win team. But I I don't look at them as the primary challenge to the Eagles in the NFC East. So, uh, Bird Gang for Life, nobody's challenging the Eagles in the NFC East. But I will say, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I got you on here, Chris. I got you on here because I got a panel no, of my people. They're going to think, gonna think I'm out here two cheating. games of them, put it that yeah. way. Yeah. I agree so, with you. I, I, I like the coach. I like the culture change. And I think that last year, winning nine games with so many injuries that all seemed to happen at the same time, whereas our team was very lucky and had zero to one injury uh, late in the season. I think the injuries kind of held them back. And so not changing the roster, but having the roster be healthy, I feel like they might keep pace per oh. se. I, I don't, I, again, I don't expect them to win 12 games, but I'm thinking they're going to be right around that nine, nine win. Cause they can't win 10 games. It is, it is a oh. rougher schedule. Um, yeah. It's eight or nine games. So I, I feel like they're going to keep pace with last year and uh, do the best they can because I also don't believe in Daniel Jones. And I feel like that $160 million and the pressure of New York, if he's not playing well, might uh, bother him a little bit. Here's uh, how screwed up it is. So they gave him a contract that they can basically get out of after two years. Mm -hmm. um, they need Barkley in the worst way for Daniel Jones to be successful, and yet they will not give Barkley anything in terms of a long-term deal. And, and I get where he's frustrated. I get where they are on it. I do think there are three or four players at the position in the league that, that are difference makers, that it wouldn't kill you to give a three-year deal to. And I think Barkley is one of those guys. You know, he, he's not McCaffrey, okay? But he's not one of the guys that you pick off the street and have success with either. This is this is an upper echelon running back who can do some things. So uh, I'm going to get to that question real quick. What is one thing you think could help the Giants uh, bump them up to the next level? Like what position are they in dire need to just upgrade that would just help them? Well, it's upgrade, but it's also just higher performance. The Giants have always been a really good team when their pass rush has been good. Ojolari is obviously, you know, 
I, I think, on his way to being a pretty good player. Dexter Lawrence is an excellent player. Um, but they, Kayvon Thibodeau has got to step up this year. This is yeah. a, this is a big year. This is a guy who was, you know, what top three, four, five pick in the draft. And they expected him to be a dominant pass rusher and they haven't been thrilled with the way he practices. And, and that, like, that's, that's unbelievable. You yeah. Know? And that, that, on, speaking of the Jets pass rush, that McDonald guy, uh, he, he he looks like a keeper. He, the way he was bending and yeah. running again. I actually watched the game, not the hard knocks. I watched the game. He just looks fast. Man, he looks fast. Yeah, uh, they may have lucked out there because they yeah. they wanted to take Broderick Jones and then the and then the Patriots uh, traded back with Pittsburgh and they ended up having to take McDonald's. So we'll see how that works out. But yeah, I think the Giants' pass rush has to be better, and that's right at the feet of Thibodeau. And that and that's when you feel like the Giants are the Giants when they have a great pass rush. That's when you feel like, oh, I'm scared of the Giants. When they yep. don't, I'm like, oh, they're the Giants. So that you're right about that. Um, that's where I was thinking. Yeah. Uh, so back to the running back situation. The running back situation in the league is making me angry. I yeah. understand what stats say. I understand, that, again, the position. But they're running these kids into the ground. And unless you're like the first overall pick, which nobody picks running backs like that anymore, you're getting a subpar contract. And then when you go to get your second contract, because they told you, oh, you got to wait, you're getting pennies on the dollar for them to rerun you into the ground. Something's got to change, Chris. Like I want the I want the I want the Ryan Leaf contract where you give a running back in the first three rounds a hundred million dollars, and then you just run him into the ground, and then you could go retire in peace or something. Because right now. Who wants their kid to be a running back? We're, we're going to lose – just play Lowell's full, fullbacks. We're going to lose this position, Chris. Kids are not going to be out here wanting to be a running back. They'll be it's anything happening. but a running back. Yeah, it's happening. It's happening in college. It's happening in uh, higher levels of high school football right now where yeah. kids are switching positions because they know they're not going to get paid. I And I get it. Um, and not only get paid, you're going to get ran into the ground. Yeah. I think it's an unfortunate situation. Um that does not have the easiest of solutions. Now there no. is the rookie performance pool where if you perform at a certain level, uh, young, you know, first couple of years of your contract, you can actually earn more money. I think maybe they work toward trying to, um, if you do it at running back, you do it, you get paid even more. But the perfect case to me right now, the only time a running back truly has any sort of leverage should be Jonathan Taylor. He's three years in. He's due for a extension. He, there, if you give him an extension, you're still getting three to four years of his prime. You're yeah. still getting that high level of performance, and yet they don't want to do it. Uh, and, Jim Irsay's just acted like a jackass through this whole thing, and I don't blame Jonathan Taylor for uh, sitting out right now. This is the only time that they truly have leverage, and if you're Taylor and you're not going to get it now, you can't sit there and argue. I'm going to get it later. You know, no. you ju you just can't. So and now, and now the Snyder's gone. Ursa is the worst owner in the league to me. I can't stand yeah. that guy. He is a wussy wussy. I don't know what's going on in his brain, but God bless him. He's got a billion dollars in his pocket. Yeah. He can do what he wants, I guess. But he's but I, just. But I'll say this: you know what I do appreciate about him is that when the league wants to deliver a message like to Daniel Snyder or somebody like that, they put Ursa out there. Because we know everything that's wrong with Ursa already. Like there are no skeletons <laughs> in the closet. It's all out there. What are you yeah. gonna do to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And like yeah. I said, he's he's cuckoo kachu anyway. So he's like, yeah, just point me in a direction. I'll shoot whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Exactly. To me. So, it, that's funny. Um, so your top five quarterbacks in the league just for this year, not living off a legacy, not living off last year. Like if you were, if you could see the crystal ball and tell me who were the top five guys going to be this year for you, who, who, what are your top five? Well, Mahomes is still one. Um, and he will be Jalen is number two. Um, I, I, I am amazed at how people truly forget that if Jonathan Gannon just had a clue in the second half of that game, Jayla Hurts is the MVP of the Super Bowl. And, yeah. and look, I know the strip sack was there, but yeah, I don't know what Jonathan Gannon was doing, but he completely screwed that up. Uh, Thank he goodness he's to... gone. So I I do have Jalen right there at number two. I'll put Burrow third. Um, 
I have to think about this um, because my my brain doesn't work all that well. Uh, I'll put Burrow third. You got Allen. You got Herbert. You got yeah. I got Herbert. Lamar. I, I probably have Herbert fourth. Who else? Burrow, oh, you said Burrow three. So Burrow three, Herbert fourth, and number five. Her. I tell you, at the end of the year, the guy that I think could be number five. I love Justin Fields. Okay. I love so him. You're, you're you're a Justin Fields guy. All right. So I am, and I'll, here's why. I you know I do the games for Rutgers, and I've seen I saw him play a lot in college. And I really think that people don't pay attention when they talk about him having trouble throwing. This dude has made some throws in the league and before the league that not many people can make. Um, these deep outs and things that you have to be just dead on perfect to deliver. That coupled with the athleticism um, is right there. I, I I still would put, um, I think Lamar gets a bad rap. So Let's say Herbert could be there, or rather uh, Fields could be there at the end of the year. I still would put Lamar in front of him. I think Lamar absolutely gets a bad rap. So I'm going to put uh, Justin Fields at like six and Lamar at seven just because I don't know what that offense is going to look like. I know he's dynamic, but he's also been injured a lot. So yeah. my top five are going to be golf. I think golf is going to ball out. At the end of the year last year, the last also six the games of the year. Five. La yeah, last year, the last like six or seven games – he was going nuts and it didn't matter yeah. because they're the lions and they were, they were too far behind. But this year with the weak NF NFC, I feel like he's going to ball out and eat up. Um, then I have Josh Allen. Uh, he, he throws too many picks still, but it, it's, that's an issue. Th and they're red zone picks too. That's they're red zone picks, but he also runs over everybody and, and he's going to be okay. Then three, I got burrow and then two just for this year. And I want to tell you why. Just this year, I got Patrick Holmes at two. And I got Jalen Hurts at one. Not because oh, I'm an Eagles fan. Listen to me. Come listen, on, listen. Maximum Homer. I do reason I put listen, I'm gonna tell you why. The only reason I'll put him at number one this year is because I feel like Jalen Hurts is gonna win MVP this year. I feel like if he goes through and has a similar season to what he had last year with a tougher schedule, that'll help bump him up to win the MVP this year. And that would make him number one for the year if he got MVP. Because if it's not Jalen Hurts that I'm picking as MVP, it's going to be Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this year with the playing the Bills and, you know, the Jets hype and uh, going against San Francisco in season, I feel like that's going to help his credibility of, oh, he played against soft schedule. Of course he did so well. But the offense is stacked. And if he does what he's supposed to do, I feel like he'll be MVP. And that's why he's my number one. Homerism aside, that's why. But if it's not him, obviously, it's Patrick Mahomes. Don't yell at me, Chris. I'm just telling you. I, I love he's him. He's going to be MVP. I did, I did games on ESPN radio last year. I did um, the Eagles game. I did Eagles Giants uh, at the Meadowlands when they just absolutely throttled them. And I did the Chiefs Jaguars in the, in the regular season. I think it was around week 10. Dude, so, watching Mahomes in person, it's just a whole nother game. It's Patrick a, Patrick Mahomes makes me sick and also happy at the same time. Because yeah. I hate Thomas Edward Brady with yeah. all of my heart till the end of time. He is not my goat. And so if somebody else who's already on the ascension of being the young goat could eclipse Tom Brady, I have a lot of love for him. And also Andy Reid, obviously, is his coach. And so watching their style of play and the way he plays and – uh, Kelsey is the tight end. Like I, I love everything about him. As long as I don't have to play him, Patrick Mahomes is he's he's the best quarterback. I get it. But like I said, just for this year, because I expect Jalen Hurst to win an MVP this year. That's why I'm putting him number one. If he doesn't, then Mahomes is going to win another one because that's just what he does. Yeah. And uh, just a side note from you and me, uh, from a polar bear to a black bear. If you just leave one of your little uh, um, uh, news tags around, I can go sit in the booth behind you. I'll be quiet. But I just want to get in the building for the Jets Eagles game. Everybody so believes you'll be quiet. You, hey, look, look, I'm, look, I'm just saying. Eh? If you if you come down, you get to do the game. Just bring your boy with you. Okay. I'm security. I'll get a T-shirt printed up to security, and I'll roll with you. You know, what I mean? we'll be like twins. They won't know the difference. You know what I'm saying? Same, same. You know, polar bear, black bear. We're brothers, and I don't care what nobody say. Okay, we're in the bear family. So we're just remember the that twins. That's right. You, you and me. That's right. That's what we're gonna do. Um. So last question, I, I get you out here because I know you're up against it. Um, how do you think the Eagles are going to bounce back after the Super Bowl year? You know, Super Bowl, uh, Fugazi, or yeah. they're going to be able to keep pace with what they did. Like, obviously, they're not going to be as good as last year, but just try and keep pace like they did in the early 2000s as Eagles. Well, I don't think anybody's beating them. 
I really don't think anybody's beating him in the NFC. Um, 49ers uh, are going to be problems. A, yeah, they have problems, but they're going to be close. Uh, but I think it's going to be the same NFC championship game. And I just don't see anybody beating him. I, they, they, I expect the Cowboys to be in the playoffs, but they'll do what they do and then blow it. You know? until, they, until they prove otherwise, it's yeah. clockwork for them. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't – I'm not impressed by anybody else in the NFC right now. Who, who do we think in the NFC could legitimately make a push besides San Francisco with the talent they have, assuming that Bosa's deal gets up? The Seahawks, because of Carroll and their resurgence last year yeah. and probably building off of that. And again, my my sleeper pick is the Lions. They're, they've been biting and clawing at kneecaps for three years now, and I feel like they're going to get over their little hump. Yeah. And uh, then the Bears and, and then the Bears pulling up the rear. I think the, I, I do believe that the Bears are going to surprise people because, again, Justin feels out there without the weapons and without yeah. the – uh, protection that he needed, I think, of being another year in the system, I believe he's going to take a large leap this year, too. I, I do believe what you said about him earlier. So, But it's right. still a weak NFC. Still but just let so me weak. ask you a question before we go. I have talked to my friends who I still have down in Philadelphia, um, and I have asked this question, and I cannot believe that the answer to this question is as split as it is. What is the biggest play in Eagles history? Philly, Philly, Philly special. What You're is killing it? me. I, the I Brandon just, Graham strip sack is the biggest play in Eagles history. Come on. So it, they should okay, have here, the damn statue do, of Brandon do, Graham diving do, at Brady. Do Do you know why it's not? Why? Because even if he would have scored a touchdown, what would they have had to do? They still had to go for two. That 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 play did not win him the game. It he still would have had to go for close. two just to tie. It came damn close. It did. It did come close. But I'm saying, if he would have scored on that play with no strip sack. He still would have had to score two to tie. So, yes, it's great. And I love Brandon Graham. It, 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 it got me unblocked from Brandon Graham. I, and I'm happy because, you know, Black Gritty, they call me BG. I, I met him. You blocked he, by Brandon Graham? Oh, this was back in the day when everybody was complaining. He was on a block f fanatic campaign. He was blocking everybody. But he had blocked me. We're friends Grant. again. Like he's, he, he is by far. I only spent a year in town, okay? He is by yeah. far the best athlete I have ever met as a he, guy. He is the best. This was like rookie, second year on. He he was just, people were going crazy. I said something stupid because I was just going crazy at, at one bad play. And he was on a block fest. It wasn't just me, it was everybody. But he unblocked everybody. We're unblocked. And like I said, I, I met him in person. And uh, somebody was like, oh, that's Black Gritty. He's like, BG. I'm like, nah, dog, you BG. Don't, don't you call me <laughs> BG. So we're good for life. Obviously, if he needs anything, I'm paying for it regardless in life. But that is a good split decision. And Philly, Philly. I mean, he was just wide open, and it's Nick Foles, and he's just a backup and never had nothing, never did nothing. got to write a book about it. You know, Brandon Graham's going down in history, too, because he got to have my guy, Tom Brady, who I hate, sitting on the ground crying I'm like a you, punk. That damn statue should be Brandon Graham, Sack, and Brady. Well, let's, that's what let's, that statue should be. Not not Doug and, and Nick Foles sitting there drawing <laughs> it up. Come on well, now. If anything, it should have just been Nick because it was Nick's idea and his way to roll. So it, it should have been Nick by himself. Carson Wentz sitting on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll get a Graham and Foles uh, uh, statue set up for you, and we'll be good to go. Uh, I appreciate your time. I'm going to link your Twitter and your Instagrams and uh, obviously the video of you uh, cruising the streets with the fanatic like an awesome human being. <laughs> I appreciate you, Chris. Love you, brother. Grumpy Bear and get a wife a hug for me. Go have fun doing what you do today. You're the best, Gritty. Appreciate it, brother. Thanks.